Hello, this is a short podcast entitled Coding Functions in Mathematica. What I'm going to do in this podcast is show you how to code a variety of functions using Mathematica. We'll start here with function number one, x squared. Notice that this function doesn't have a name. So the first thing you have to do in defining a function in Mathematica is give it a name keeping in mind that Mathematica uses a capital letter for all its commands I want to name this function uh, starting with something other than a capital letter so I'm just going to call it function one not very clever but that's what I'm going to call this function and then I'm going to do a, a square bracket just as you would um, in typical Mathematica stuff and notice that you have one variable here x so I'm going to type an X, and then I'm going to type an underscore. What the underscore means is that is a, the argument or the domain of this function. So in typical mathematics, if you have Y parentheses X, in Mathematica, you're going to type the function name, in this case, function 1, square bracket X underscore. You only use the underscore when you're defining the function. You don't use the underscore when you're using the function. I'm going to close my square bracket, and then I'm going to do a colon equals. And that colon equals says uh, is an assignment variable. That means the function 1 uh, as a function of X underscore is assigned to this mathematics x control up caret squared control spacebar and then I'm going to shift enter and now I have defined that function so the first thing you do in functions is you define them you always need something on the left hand side uh, which would be a function name and the argument with an underscore then you need the colon equal then you need the actual mathematics okay I can now use this function by I'm going to say I want to know, there we go, I want to know what the function of, I want to apply this to a 5, I'm going to evaluate that, and that will give me a, a 25. Oftentimes, it's really a good idea, what you want to do is you want to assign a, a variable to that result especially if you want to do a comparison so I'm going to assign a a, a a variable name notice what I did there a variable name it starts with a lowercase letter letter and I did put a capital letter in there uh, just to make it a little bit more readable and then if I need to use that if I need to use that number later on I just type answer to function one and and that that number will 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 pop up okay so that's that's the first one pretty straightforward I'm gonna go ahead and erase all these okay next one is the same idea I'm gonna call this cleverly function 2 and notice this one has two arguments and I separate them with commas and again the same notation colon equal and then I do X I'm gonna do up carrot and then control space and now to multiply oops excuse me I need to I need to type a space to multiply okay so what you don't see here but I typed it right in between here right there there's a space so that's how I multiply in Mathematica I'm gonna evaluate that control enter okay and now I can say function 2 and order matters okay so I'm gonna do 5 and 10 what that means is the 5 is assigned to the X and the 10 is assigned to the Y. So it doesn't matter what order. I could have typed Y underscore comma X underscore here, but um, it doesn't matter. But you have to remember, pay attention to the order. So um, 5 and 10 is, is what I'm doing there. And when I evaluate that, I get 200 and 250. Okay. Function, function 3, same idea. I'm going to call this function 3, square bracket. And in this case, I only have one argument. So I just type x underscore colon equal 3 space x squared. And the reason for the space there is because there's a multiply. Plus 1. I'm going to evaluate that. And now I can use this 
I can use this uh, equation. I'm going to put a 5 in there, and that should give me a 76. What I can also do here is I can plot this function, and I plot it as a function of x. Here we go. And then I say I want the domain of x or the range of x to go from 1 to 10. And I do that range. I say what the variable is, and then I want the range to go from 1 to 10. And then I can plot that, and I will get something like, as soon as it evaluates, There we go. And I get my range, I get my plot that looks just like this. Get on here so we can see. There we go. I could also ask for, instead of just plotting it, if I just want a table of numbers, okay, I could get a table of numbers just like that. So there's my, my list of tables. A lot of times what I want to do is I want a, a nice I want two columns of, of, of data there. So um, I usually call this results and I build myself a little table and I do I'm going to put opening and close parentheses here and I'm going to say show me the, vari the x variable and then show me the function of x and I do all this from x going 1 to 10. So what this is going to do, it's going to give me a nice table of results and I can hide that with the semicolon and then I can grid it. So if I want a nice table of results and use the frame all command here, that will give me a nice table of, of results. So what I did here is I said I want in, in, in curly brackets because it's a list. I said show me the value of x, x going from 1 to 10, and then show me the results of function number 3 is a function of x, and there we go. So that gives me a nice little table. Okay, uh, this one should be pretty straightforward. Again, there's only one variable. So all I have to do is, is code this 1 minus x plus x squared and I got one too many of those there. There we go. Control space to get out of the notation. Pretty straightforward. I'm not going to do anything with that. Function 5, uh, same idea. What I have here now is I've got two arguments or two variables. And again, it doesn't matter what order I put them in as long as I'm, I'm consistent. Okay, I'm going to do a control slash to get the uh, fraction sign. I do the x squared. And in the denominator, I do x squared minus y. Okay, so that's how I code this one here. Okay, function 6. And again, you see how I'm naming these things. How many parameters do I have there? I have two. Excuse me. Underscore y underscore colon equal. And then I do x squared plus, and now in parentheses, y minus, now I want a cube root here, so I'm going to go up under palettes, come down the basic math, the basic math palette, and you see it here, I'm going to go grab this thing here, there we go, and I'm going to put my 3 in here, I'm going to put my x squared in there, I'm going to close my math palette because I don't need to see that anymore, okay, I'm going to put my parentheses in there, and all of this is raised to the power of 2. So I'm just coding it in exactly as I see it there, and goes from there. All right, function number 7. I'm going to call that function 7, and I hope you're getting this by now. I've got two parameters there. I've got R and I've got S, colon, equal. I'm going to do a control backslash for the fraction. I'm going to do R. Now I need a space here because there's an implied multiplication there, so be careful with that. I need a space. I'm going to go up to my math palette. I'm going to grab the, the square root symbol there. I'm going to put the S in there. I'm going to go ahead and close that to get it out of the way. I've got a pi in the bottom. I'm going to hit the escape key. I'm going to type in pi 
and escape and that gives me the pi so that one's ready to go okay, function 8 function 8 what are my parameters in there looks like I have an X underscore and a Y underscore colon equal oh I have a Z too don't I I better go back and put that in there I got a Z so I have three parameters in this case so I got Z now there's an implied space there, so or applied multiply, so I gotta hit a space. And now I see this E function in there in Mathematica, that's gonna be a capital E. Control up carrot raise that to a power, and you have XY there. If you just type in XY, it's gonna think it's a variable called XY. This is actually X times Y, so I'm gonna type X space Y to make sure that codes correctly. Okay. Make sure that codes correctly. Okay, function number nine, the pressure of a gas is defined as nRT over V, where R is a constant. I'm going to call this one pressure, and my variables there are N underscore T. Now, I'm going to use a little T there. I don't like to use capital letters as variable names. I'm going to use a little T there, and V, close bracket, equal, colon, equal, control, backslash, N space R space T and then a V in the denominator. That's how I'm going to define that. Then when you use this equation, let me evaluate it, okay? When you use this equation, you have to be very careful that when you're putting numbers in here, I'm going to say R equals 0.0806 because that's what it is. And now when I use this equation, I got to make sure that I'm the numbers that I'm putting in. I got to make sure the numbers that I'm putting in match up. So n is one, t is two ninety eight, and v is ten. If I don't put them in the right order, I'm going to get I'm going to get a bad result. So my pressure here would be two point four. Okay, got to be careful with that. And function ten. Okay, it's a, the formula for a trapezoid. So I'm going to give a, actually give that a name. Okay, my parameters there are height, okay, B1, I would not, now I have them represented here as underscores, do not use underscores in function names, okay, you can do that, but uh, that requires a little special notation, and we're not quite ready for that yet, so I'm just going to use B1 underscore and B2 underscore, close my bracket, colon equals, control backslash to get a fraction, H, in the denominator, I have two space, because I'm multiplying, B1 plus B2, close my parentheses, and ready to go. So this is how you define and use functions in Mathematica. And again, I would go back to, uh, if you do want to create a table, this is how you do that. If you just want to plot your function, you plot it as a function of x, and you have your parameters going, whatever your numbers are, whatever your domain is. So that should give you a nice graph. I hope this helps, and we'll see you online.